Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA Pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined by the inimitable Sean O'D. That's me. Timestamps in the description. Timestamps in the description. Please do not complain oh, yes. on Spotify. It's it's going to make me start drinking again. If you don't want to hear our banter, you can skip. We want skip, you to skip. Skip. skip we skip. want. We give you, and the timestamps are accurate on the Patreon. They're kind of within of thirty seconds or so on Spreaker. But please, yeah, use the timestamps. They're can there find for you. Find it. We do um, it for you. We do it for you. And um, well, I'm up here in Tahoe, and yeah, uh, we're recording remote. Caught the powder day of a lifetime, which was amazing. Four hours, folks. He was out there for four hours. I got here later than I wanted. I trudged through the blizzard. I guess I just wanted to say, uh, we're doing this show. It's really interesting. So I'm producing these stand-up shows, and we're doing this show at a coffee shop. And oh. it's called Cup of Tahoe. Shout out um, to them. They're Ooh. awesome. So it's run by this woman, Sandra. And she is just such a connector. She's just someone mm. who knows everybody. Oh, I've always been jealous of those people. Like, I just don't have that in my bones. I don't have and it. And there's just those certain people that are just like, oh, I know this person. Oh, I got this person. Or, oh, don't you worry. Or like, they always have the hookup everywhere. I'm like, how do you guys do it? Like, I'm good with people, but like, not with like, I don't know, maintaining those kind of like, I guess maybe asking for favors. Like, I'm not really like a favor asker. Maybe that's a part of it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. So she, you know, she's just very extroverted, very talkative, very sweet. You know, she sold out the first show. It was her. She moved all the tickets. So now she's like, I'm going to sell out this show. Don't you worry. Because, you know, it's obviously been an insane week in Tahoe with this blizzard and snowstorm. Yeah. But anyway, she pulled this move on me. And I was like, this is like, you're so cool. Because like, I, I don't have the ability to do this either, Shano. So I was like, hey, um, she's like, let me know if you have any recommendations. By the way, she was like at the coffee shop. She's like, have another coffee. I insist. I'm like, I can't have coffee past noon. I'm, I'm yeah. 34. And she's like, no, take this cold brew to go. I was like, okay, okay, fine. And then she's like, she's like, our, somebody complained about her grilled cheese. And she told me this whole Yelp story. And then she's like, you know what? You know what? You're taking a grilled cheese to go. I was like, I don't, I don't need that. Okay, fine. Oh, and then I took it. Oh, that sounds nice. You should have so, saved the cold brew for like the next morning. I did. I did. That's oh, exactly okay, what okay, I did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, um, today I was texting her. She's like, you know, let me know if you need anything. And I was like, hey, like, I'm just looking for a place to run because all the sidewalks here still have snow and she's like let me text all my runner people i'll let you know and so then um i guess nobody had any great suggestions whatever because everything's covered in snow but then she was like hey would you like to go on a snowshoe tour i bet you'd have a lot of fun it's very scenic and i was like oh, oh you got me you got me i want to go snowshoeing that sounds very fun i don't oh, know anything about fun. that is that where like you basically have like tennis rackets on your feet <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've never done it. I don't know what to expect, but I was like, that when sounds. When are you going? Well, I'm waiting to hear back from her, but I told her that I was in for it. So now I'm trying to convince our friend Brian to come with me. And he's like, do I need to wear snow pants? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> honestly, probably. Yes. Why? <laughs> what is he? He bet you like he only has jeans. I'm sure. You know, a lot of people don't have all the equipment, which I understand. So what about like sweatpants though? you don't want anything made of cotton because if you get some snow on it, it melts, then you're, then you're wet and you're wet. But it's like, if you're not, if you don't fall, you're probably fine. You're going to fall. Probably you're on a new kind of shoe. Oh, that's true. It's kind of like walking with, um, flippers on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet it's the same kind of vibe. But yeah, super cool. So She's fun. Wait, so are you in the Nevada side? That's funny. Well, I'm at a casino, so you know it. Oh, damn straight. Yeah, That's so fun. Heavenly, where I skied, actually, you can ski from Nevada to California normally. Normally, you can do that because there's a, you know, tram. I forget what they call it, a gondola, something that connects the two states, which is so cool. Mm. But... I was so afraid. Remember, I, I told Shannon on the bonus, all I did was I did the same lift and run over and over. One, because there was three feet of pow that nobody had touched. But also I heard this horror story where people went to like some other lift and they had closed the connecting lift and people had to hike so far in thick, thick, oh. chungus pow. And I was like, I do not want to be doing that on this glorious powder day. So that's it. I stuck to my lift. Yeah, you just stuck to the one. 
I had a really fun trip up to Tahoe a couple of years ago and did the casinos and it was a fucking blast. Oh my God. Couple I like it here a lot. My life. <laughs> it was really fun. A couple of the what? Best nights of my life. It was so freaking fun. Oh, I love that for you. So I ended up running. I found like some sidewalk that was empty and it just surrounds the lake and it was so pretty, uh, but it's so cold by the lake. Oh my God. Oh, I bet the wind. Mm -hmm. I've never been there in the winter oh, to go. Very beautiful. Definitely giving Salt Lake a run for its money. Extremely oh my pretty. God, yeah, it's gorge. I'm going in June. Ooh, I love that for you. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's my update. What's up with you, Shano? Amazing. Well, we got some more complaints about my voice. Yeah, I'm trying not to do yeah. vocal fry because somebody specifically complained that me fake doing it was really hard on them. Yeah, well, we talked about that in a few episodes ago, but this one was on OKOP's oh, um, boy. YouTube channel. <gasps> How dare they? Well, they have a lot of YouTube subscribers, listeners, et cetera, so they have a shit ton of comments. So me going through them. Oh, boy. You know, trying to see if anyone said something nice about me. And, of course, it's all, like, I can't stand this girl's voice or, oh, God, her accent's awful or what is that vocal fry? And I was just, like, okay. So I so then I scroll up and I start listening to it. And this is no shade to Sam at all, but one of the hosts of the show has a lot of vocal fry. And then also you have vocal fry. So I'm, like, huh, three out of four people on this show have vocal fry, but who are they coming at? Me. I mean, and I was just fed the fuck up. Here it is, Shano. They hate you because they ain't you. <laughs> Damn straight, honey. But it did feel like slightly misogynistic was like the vibe I was getting. Because I'm like, what? okay, you guys listen to this person's YouTube channel all the time. He has a lot of vocal fry. And then you come on and you're talking shit about me? Like, what the hell? You know what and this it really is, hurt Shana? my feelings. What? All the men on Reddit, I've read so many comments about hating Taylor Swift. And this is, you're basically the next Taylor Swift. And people, <laughs> men right. are haters. Men are haters on T-Swift. Yeah, well, there was girls on doing it too to me. Really? Well, the, yeah. they're, they're, you know, they're jealous. I, <sighs> I am so tired of the Taylor Swift, the jet joke. Because first of all, we were making that joke years ago and it's played out. And second of all, of all the people... Of all the people, enough. There's CEOs who do not sing and dance and are just the overlords of this huge company <laughs> with no Don't talent. Don't bring us joy or entertainment. Exactly. I'm like, she's a worker. Like, you can't really deny that. It's not like Taylor Swift can outsource being Taylor Swift. Well, do not. Also, honestly, like. What you think she can fly commercial? Like people, of course she, not. People go fucking nuts over her, and like honestly, I do kind of get the whole like carbon emission. Like that does fucking suck. How much these private jets are doing? Yeah, but I think you're right. Like let's go after the people who like can fly commercial. Yes, that I'm are stupid. doing that. <sighs> not Taylor Swift, who literally couldn't. Like, it would be dangerous can't. for everyone. The Everyone Swifties like she went to that plane. wedding in New Jersey and the entire island like practically sank with the amount of people that went there. I've, I have meditated on this in my regime. We will simply outlaw private jet use for males. I think this is I think for that'll males. do it. I'm not worried about it. I think that'll clean it right up. There you go. Yeah, I got it. So but, we got an update but, here. Oh, go about ahead. My skirt situation. Oh, well, I was just going to say like skirt situation. Yeah. Okay, so this was on OKOP show too, our episode with them, where the Taylor, my skirt, not Taylor oh, Swift, the, but the, the Taylor, Taylor guys, calm my down, Swifties, the Taylor. Skirt. Not so this is a little update for you guys. Well, so, wait, can we bring everybody in? She Shannon yes. brought her her skirt to a Taylor who professed to be a Taylor and who was not a Taylor, and no, did a terrible job. 
Let oh, okay. me tell it. Okay. So I brought my grandma's slip. So it was like kind of a family heirloom, I suppose. And it was just like, it, didn't, it wasn't flattering at all. And there was a lot of material. And I was like, oh, this would actually look really cute as a mini skirt. So I brought it to a cleaners who outsourced the tailors. Wow. So it was tailors, but like the clean, like the, the cleaner people, whatever, the employees there right. did not know what they were doing when right. they were pinning it. So they pinned it and they basically made it the size of my waist and just straight down, not um, thinking about my hips and my butt. And so basically it would be the size of a 10 year old's like it was ridiculous. So I got it back and my mom was with me and she was all pissed. And so anyway, they, they I went in to try it on and it fits me now. Ooh. It's not great though because there are these like random seams on the side. It doesn't look terrible, but it's not as like good as it could have been. And it's not like the most flattering thing in the world, but I was just like whatever, like they they at least gave me something to work with. It looks pretty it's decent. It's not bad. Okay. But I do have some ideas on how it could look better, so I'm kind of thinking about taking it to another tailor and having them like fix it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I did ask them like, okay, since this like took longer and it's not really perfect, like, can I get a discount? And so then they gave me $15 back. On how much? On 95. So okay. it's still definitely not great. Cause I, I have to like, I mean, I don't have to get it tailored again, but I just think there are some touch, like touches that could make it better. Did they damage it? by their lack of quality workmanship creating these seams and whatnot i mean not necessarily like it looks okay. fine it's not like majorly damaged like it just has these like kind of random seams on the side and like the back side i, I don't know shannon I, I i don't know if i'm i'm upset i i i can't believe you got 15 this doesn't feel like a 15 dollar error I know, but I'm just kind of like, sometimes I'm like, is it worth my time of like relit, like not like it was dramatic or anything, but just having to like relive the like annoyance of it and then like having to battle them on it. Like to me, I'm just like my own, my own time and like peace is sometimes more like whatever. I don't even care to try. That's fair. That's mature. I agree with that. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, whatever I, I, I'm more feeling for like the, the tailor that they like then sent it to and then had to do like double the work and like, it wasn't their fault. It was True. just like the shitty. So I don't really want to like take money from them because they did, they did the best that they could with the information that they were given. And they really did actually do like a, a much better job than I was expecting. Like when I got it back, I was like, oh, actually, like, I can work with this. This isn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, I think um, I think this is we'll call this one a W. Sounds like we got a decent slip to miniskirt conversion. Yeah, it's not bad. It can, it can be better. But for now, I'm just like, it is what it is. Well, great. Well, thanks for the update. Um, and You're we welcome. also wanted to shout out. I don't know about these. We got some stickers. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't showed you these yet. Um, so one of our listeners, Green Egged Sam. So that's her Instagram is at Green Egg E D S A M M. She sent us these stickers. She said, AITA host. My name is Sam. I make stickers. Here's some. I love the pod. And then she wow. sent us these cute dog stickers. So she wants some. Let me um, see these doggies. So they're corgis. Oh, I love that. I want so that. So she gave two sets of stickers, one for you, one for me. Here's another corgi. There we go. That's adorable. And then I think this one's a pit bull. Uh, but yeah, yeah check her like out. That. And I think that she, I mean, she has other dog stickers as well. I'm wondering if she can even like, I mean, she's an artist. I she drew these, so maybe she could even do custom ones. I don't know. I'm go. just throwing that out there. New, <laughs> if you don't do it, it's a business idea. You might have people knocking on your door for it, but super cute. Thanks for the and sticks. I just thank you so much and check her out. Thanks, Sam. Check her out. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, I actually uh, do see you big time. I was going to kind of throw a fit over something that happened, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let myself do it this time. I don't want to litigate. 
Yeah. You're right. It eats up so much time. It really does. And you just have to ruminate on it. Yes. The one, it, it's like my mom all, like taught me when you get a parking ticket, literally go online. The second you get it, pay it and never think about it again. Because like if you just take care of it right away, yep. if you hold on to it for like 20 days or however long to the last day, and then you're just for weeks, you'll be like, God damn it. God damn it. But like if you do it right away and after I started doing that, it was it was the best because it was like, oh, it's, it's it's out of my mind. It's like it didn't yeah. happen. It has a cost. Procrastination is actually really expensive. Oh, God, you're telling me. Yeah, I've been procrastinating my whole life. It's okay. It's going to turn around this year, people. Same. Guys, please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon. Over 200 bonus episodes. Vibrant Discord community. It's a lot of fun in there. We got one heck of a juicy app for you today. Accurate timestamps as well. Our second situation, AITA for boarding the plane and leaving without my wife. Oh, God. Oh, but first, brother. folks... I had to, I thought this one was so interesting. Mm -hmm. It's so small, but so big. Oh, it just, oh, it's so good. I love it. A-I-T-A. For being mad, my wife rejected me for a dance, then dance with someone else. My wife, 51F, and I, 50M, have been married over 23 years with young adult kiddos. We mm -hmm. love each other very much, and we have what I would consider to be a good marriage. Great at times but maybe it could be even better if we worked at it more. At times we struggle with resentments over past issues that we have never made the proper time to work through. No affairs or infidelity. We recently attended a destination wedding for some younger friends, early 30s. I was really looking forward to spending one-on-one -on -one time with my wife because when we go out, it's usually with friends. Early in the eve, one of the single guests asked my wife to dance while I was talking to the bride and groom. I was annoyed, but let it pass. After my wife and I danced and my wife was taking a break, the father of the bride asked my wife to dance, and she said yes. I danced with our two friends, male and female, to pass the time. Again, not a big deal. We don't really have an issue if either of us dances with friends. And weddings will sometimes stretch this rule as you always meet some new people, but dancing with complete strangers, not okay. I was still dancing in a group and I walked over to my wife who was taking a break and asked her to join me as I love dancing with her. She said, no, that she was too tired and her feet hurt. At that moment, the father of the bride stepped next to her and asked her to dance again. And she immediately said, yes, it was a real slap mm -hmm. in the face. I was embarrassed and angry. The bride, who is also a friend, came over to dance with me as I realized in hindsight that she likely knew there was an issue as a relative went to break up the dance between her dad and my wife. Mm. It was at that point I realized how drunk the father was and learned he was divorced. The bride's father was roughly 10 years older than my wife. This just made me feel worse as I realized this was no longer an innocent dance request, but an issue I needed to resolve. I realized I needed to gather up my wife so that we could head back to the hotel as the bride's father was drunk and enamored with my wife. It was causing an issue for me, the bride, and the bride's family, so it was time to depart and to not create a bigger issue. I could tell you that she likely did it out of politeness, obligation, or some inability to say no, even if she wanted to say no. When we got back to the hotel, I let my wife know how badly she had hurt and embarrassed me. She immediately apologized and said she did not mean to hurt me. She really did not want to dance with him, but felt she couldn't say no. While I can understand where she's coming from, it doesn't change the fact that I feel like she chose someone else over me. This isn't the first time something like this has happened, but it is definitely the worst incident I can recall. A stranger's request or need is somehow more important than my request or need, and I think that is likely the heart of my frustration. It has been a week, and I still can't get past this. Neither of us have brought it up to each other since, but I'm not acting the same any longer. I don't want to be physical with her, and it's like a switch went off. It's not healthy, and I don't like feeling this way. Am I blowing it out of proportion? If not, I am not sure the right way to proceed. A I T A. Hmm. Well, I certainly relate with someone in this story. Really, Shannon? Are you someone who maybe does things that she doesn't even want to do for some inability to say no? <laughs> nope, not me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 This certainly rings true. 
I, I think it's a, it's a dynamic that I, I think it's easy to go to like, Oh, people pleaser town or whatever. But I think everybody can see themselves in this situation because the other layer to this that I thought was so juiced out was mm. sometimes you're more comfortable telling no to someone and you're not going to make an exception for them. And it's because you love them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, well, you know what? You're my brother. I don't want to do that yeah. for you. Like exactly. It's like cuz you're comfortable with them. Like everybody mm. knows that like you know, kind of stereotypical thing that happens where you sometimes tend to treat your family more shitty than you do to strangers. It's cuz we feel comfortable being able to like be ourselves and share our emotions mm. and like tell them like no, my feet fucking hurt. I've been in heels all night. But then when like the father of the bride who like in a weird way does have a little bit of like a hierarchy or like a power yeah, dynamic like, in this wedding because he's yeah. like the patriarch of the event. Like he could potentially be the one that is paying the bill for this event. Yep. Either way, though, he is like the king. He's the king, you know, and his princess is getting married. So I can definitely see being like, oh, like, yeah, of course I'll dance with you. Yep. And one of the reasons I think this resonated with me so much is that I had a conflict that just happened that was so much like this. Really? Yeah. I'm involved in a creative endeavor um, with someone and they have improved so much, but they just are very, they'll, they're, they fight me when I get feedback. Mm -hmm. And, um, they were showing off one of our kind of creative projects and some fucking random gave them a piece of feedback, which they immediately wanted to take. And when they initially told me, it wasn't that I disagreed with the feedback, but it, it actually marinated and I got really mad. And I was like, it was literally this exact thing where I was like, why the fuck is this random person so mm. important? But when I have something to say, it's not respected. Yes, um, I totally get that. And it's super, it's super, it can be very angering because it feels, it feels disrespectful. It feels like a mm -hmm. betrayal. Um, but the good thing is, I think that this was an underlying thing that was, that was in our creative partnership. And I was actually really happy it happened because I communicated these feelings and this person was super receptive mm -hmm. and I think we're going to move forward from it stronger than ever, but that's not happening here. Yeah, no, he's, I mean, look, I think she even was like, yeah, I don't really know why I do that. That's what the wife was saying. And she was being transparent about it. I think at the end of, um, you know, being like, yeah, it's kind of a habit of mine and he's still ruminating on it. I, I do think this is not about the dance. This is not about a single incident. I think this is, this must be bigger than this because unless this guy really likes dancing, I mm. think he even acknowledges that that he took her side, right? In this post, which we have to give him credit yeah. for. Yeah, of saying, I can tell she likely did it out of politeness, obligation, or an inability to say no. So it's like, so you get it. I mean, I get feeling hurt by that for sure, but it's like, I feel like this is kind of a unique situation. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't an AITA. It was a relationship advice post, but I thought it was too juicy not to uh, adapt. Mm. Oh, yeah. So let's go into the, this comment, which I thought hit it on the head here. Unfair Commission 980. I learned this in therapy about people pleasers. At some point, they stop seeing the people closest to them as people to please, but rather mm. an extension of themselves. So she could say no to you when she doesn't want to because she knows deep down that you and her are tight and it's safe to be direct with you. So mm -hmm. that's the explanation of why, but it's still not excusable. It destroys relationships all the time. Because I relate with this too, like where I people please with people that really don't even matter in my life. And then I'm and then I'm putting out the ones who I love the most. Like it really is so backwards. I mean, you definitely should never be rude to strangers because I think that is a tall tale sign of people's character as well. Like you should, you should treat everyone really well. But if you're then treating the people that you love in your life, like shit, that ain't good. 
Right. Well, I think you did set off a little alarm. I think there's a big gap between be rude to and not be. You think on some level or you behave as if fair to say mm-hmm. that saying no is rude. That's part of this. <laughs> yeah. It's not. Yeah, you're right. You know, and and the other thing is too, like, you know, we we had a little disagreement because I made this some stupid comment and you were concerned about how it would affect this one person. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And mm-hmm. the thing is that level of like, don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's like one of those things where it's like, you know, there's so many reasons people will find to dislike you. And usually most of the time when people are coming at me, cause like, if you listen to the show, you, you know how I am. And it's like, I'll, I'll hear you. I, I will hear you. It doesn't mean I'll change what I think, but I'll hear you. Right. Um, and I'm like, well, yeah, if you if you want to dislike me, I trust that you will find reasons. We can all find all kinds of reasons. But, you know, the reality is people are going to dislike you for reasons that are completely out of your control, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I actually was just talking to um, my friend Claire that has the podcast Right Answers mostly. Yeah. She was over yesterday and we were just talking about how I like really admire them and I was talking about you too, where it was just like, I feel like you guys all are like, you know, cause people will complain about like this little thing that they do. They say, instead of, so they say show. And like so many people were coming at them being like, it, I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that. They'll be like show anyway. It's like their little thing. As a joke. But I was like, in yeah, it's like just the way they talk. But huh. I was like, if that was, like, I'm really trying to work on it. But if that was me, I'd be like, okay, let's stop doing that. Like, I right. feel like, and and that's what I respect about you too, is like, like, you'll hear people out, but it's not like you're just going to like change your behavior. But then like, when I feel like when I get negative feedback, I'm so like, oh my God, do I need to go to like a, a voice speech pathologist or whatever the fuck? Like, I'm I'm just really trying to work on like, that's what makes people unique is like, you know, instead of, cause then you just become like a, a robot of whatever anybody wants from you. And then you're what nobody wants. Cause then you're just like stale and boring. Right. It's integrity. I mean, that that's what it is. It's, it's like, you know, you can't, I under, I understand it. And I think it's taken a long time and I'm not saying it never really goes away. I'll, also it's a spectrum. I feel like, you know, around certain people, I have found myself being like, what am I doing? Where am I here? Like why do I you care know? so much kind of thing? Or yeah, or just doing doing people pleaser stuff. Like if I'm intimidated mm-hmm. by someone, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. You play video games? Oh, wow. That's so oh, interesting. And you're like, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, that's not me. Who's that saying that? Who's that yes. liar up there? Oh, totally. I'll do that. I like morph myself sometimes into like what people like want me to be. Also, because I don't really want to be like argumentative. So I'd be like, oh, yeah, totally. Like, that's what I think, too. And I'm like, wait, I don't think that. Why am I saying that? I think that. I I think it's 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 definitely in the water in a lot of different ways. Um, and I think that the the big insight we can pull here is that it isn't OK. It's not OK. It, and, it, and, and that's why I'm excited for you, because I do think you have started to recognize that you are betraying yourself and you've gotten yourself into binds from this. Oof. Good Lord, have I ever, you know, you're caring for the dog. It's always, there's always some kind of thing you have to do because you agreed (laughs) to do it, you know? Um, I want to be helpful. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like we've made it work on the pod and and that you are comfortable with me. I hope that's true that, you know, you, cause I'm scared of it sometimes to be honest with you. Cause I'm like, what if she's not telling me and she hates this or feels cheated Mm -hmm. by it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, no. But I also think that, you know, I don't worry. I don't worry about it because I realize that usually if I'm acting that way, me and that person just aren't compatible for whatever reason, whatever, maybe it's just where we're at in life or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I do firmly believe this is my religion, maybe that integrity recognize integrity. And if you act integrity and you act consistent with, and you have a decent sense of morals, you will find Mm -hmm. other people and and the integral the integrity people they stick together and once you know someone has integrity that's f- incredible because it's just like so important. Those yeah. are the people you go to and rely on because they're not going to give you what you want to hear. Right. Integrity though, like you feel like when you're like you feel like 
the times I'm doing that, I'm not living with integrity for myself, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's not to say that you're doing something evil or wrong, but like, let's see, what does integrity mean? Now I'm doubting myself. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, or the state of being whole and undivided. I think maybe that's too harsh of a way to put it. I wouldn't say it's lacking with integrity, but it, someone who does have integrity sticks to what they believe in and they're not afraid to be who they are. So I, I don't know mm. what word that is. Consistency. Mm. You know, well, hey, look, there. Yeah. Some, sometimes there's a time to play the fiddle, right? Sometimes there is a time to suck up to people. There, I'm not saying yeah. that's not part of life, but I, I do think integrity is very powerful and it's something I strive for. Um, so to go to this situation though, I guess... I do think that his betrayal is valid. This is a form of betrayal. Yeah, I would definitely feel that way. I would be like, Jesus, I just asked you to dance. I clearly want to dance. Like, I want to have a good time with you. I've been looking forward to having one-on-one -on -one time with you. And then you're just out there dancing with whoever the fuck. And you're not dancing with me. It hurts, you know. And I think this is something that, you know... It it's like you can't just throw your hands up and be like, yeah, I don't know why I do that. Well, time to figure it the fuck out. It's time <laughs> to reflect. Go to therapy. You don't get to just throw your, oh, I don't know. I got emotional. I don't, no, no, no. You need to know because it's not my fucking problem. Figure it out and work your shit out, sweetheart. And he might have shit yeah. to work out too, but it, it's just, it's not okay. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, what she should have done was also say to the man, oh, I'm sorry, my feet hurt, right? Like that would have probably been the best thing to do is also deny him. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think even the reasons he's providing, I think she could have said like, listen, I understand why you're hurt. It was because I felt pressured. I thought you gave great reasons for this. This man is, you know, he might've paid for the wedding. I felt pressured. I didn't want to tell him no because this is what he wanted to do, inappropriate as it was. And- I own that. I'm sorry I hurt you. It was unacceptable what I did. I don't hear a lot of ownership coming from her. And he's sort of like, well, I don't want to sit here and fucking explain it to you because this is a blatant disregard of my feelings. Mm -hmm. This also reminds me, I think there was an episode of uh, Modern Family that like I think just rings true in so many people's relationships. And it reminds me of like what you were talking about with your creative partner of... Um, the episode was like he he like went to the like Phil, the dad, like went to a lunch with somebody else, like a client, and they recommended him get the wedge salad. And then she was like mad at him the whole episode and he didn't understand why. And then at the end, she was like, I have been telling you to get the fucking wedge salad <laughs> for like five years now and you refuse to get it. And then when someone else suggests mm. it, then you get it. And that reminds me a lot of like, it's happened in my relationship before too, where I'm like, I have told you that advice so many times. And then like you hear your dad say it and then mm -hmm. it makes sense to you. So like, is that kind of like, it kind of gives me that vibe a little bit in a way. Yeah. It feels like disrespect because it is. Yeah. Right. Like, what is it if it's not that? It's like, well, I already told you that you just don't listen to me. Well, why? Because you don't respect me as yeah, much you as don't that respect other person. My opinion or like respect the fact that like I want to dance right now. Like you clearly had the energy enough to get up for this random person. So like you could have done it to me or at least treat me with the same respect that you're treating someone else or at least or at least say no to him if you're going to say no to me. Yeah. And, and, and I think my issue here is how she, you know, she, she apologized and said she didn't mean to hurt me. Um, but the thing about it is, I, I mean, it does seem like, ugh, am I going to ding her? Does he, yeah, I guess he doesn't follow up. I, I think that he hasn't really moved. I think this guy's unsure, right? He posted this, he wanted advice. Mm-hmm. Well, he's like, he's, I, I, it feels like to me, he's just like feeling it in his, in his bones. Like he's upset about it. It's been a week and he still can't get past it. Like, of course, I'm sure they will. Like, you know, they're 50. They've been, it seems like they've been together a while. They've got kids out of the house. Like, I'm sure this isn't going to break their relationship, but there is something in him that it's triggered of like, this isn't the first time something this has happened. This is the most obvious um, example. 
that it's happened. So like now I, it just feels like the, you know, hysterical historical kind of thing where it's like, it is, this is just like the straw that's breaking the camel's back and I'm sure they can get past it. But I think maybe they need to like have a little bit deeper of a conversation about it because he's still clearly not able to get over it. I think so. And I, and I also think that if you're in a conflict with someone and you're finding yourself saying that about their behavior, right? So if she found mm -hmm. herself being like, this was a big reaction from him, if it's hysterical, it's historical, mm -hmm. then why aren't you reflecting and thinking about their perspective and their side? I mean, I naturally do this. If someone, if we have a falling out or whatever kind of issue, I'm just going to like rack my mind and be like, okay, what, what happened here? This doesn't add up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do feel like I, I, she might not have clocked it and I think he should bring it up to her, but I also do feel like I would really love to see some like, Hey, I've been thinking a lot about what happened. I've been thinking about how it made you feel. I've been thinking about other times this happened. Mm -hmm. That would mean so much to me. Cause I'm like, thank you because that's called emotional labor. And I don't want to force myself to like litigate this. That that's where right. it kind of gets to. Totally. And I think there's also a little bit of an added layer here too, because the dad is their age. He's divorced. He was kind of sweet on her, I guess, in some kind of way. And, and you know, there was a slight scene that was being caused that yeah. at least made some kind of concern for another family member to break it up. He was getting drunk. Like, I guess I'm just sort of trying to put putting myself in the shoes where like if the father or the bride asked me to dance, like I'd probably be uncomfortable, but I would, um, you know, in our lives, he would most likely be at least 20, 30 years older than me. Oh, yeah, so it yeah, wouldn't yeah. be so much of like a threat. Like I feel like my partner would probably be like, oh, ha -ha, like this it's old guy. kind of funny that she <laughs> has to dance with this guy, um, you know. Um, but there is like their peers a little bit. Yeah. He's 10 years older. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I think so. I don't think it's about this incident. And here's, here's my, I think, I guess my, my, another thought here is that, you know, when people act inconsistently, it's a betrayal to themselves, right? Cause you're mm -hmm. acting in a way that you don't want to act. And then it's a betrayal to the other person sometimes, you know, cause it's not like, somebody changed their mind all of a sudden. It's just like they're that. And I think that's going back to the integrity thing where it's like, who even is this person? Right? Like the hypocrisy or like the double standardsness of it is kind of, it's confusing. And I'm wondering if that isn't pay, playing into his anger and his, how turned off he is as well. He's like, who are you? Hmm. Yeah. But I do think he should try and be, empathetic to her situation where, you know, it is a different world out there for women than it is for men. And I do think that there is a bit of a pressure to just be like, yeah, of course I'll, I'll do what you ask kind of thing. Like we're, we're kind of programmed in our lives to be that way. So I think like, I think it would be helpful for him to look at it more of like, maybe this is something we, I can help you work on, you know, instead of being like, how dare you? Of course. How dare you isn't productive here at all. I, I agree with you completely. I think, you know, this is women, this is really summed up as a man who's assertive is a man and a woman who's assertive is a B word, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. on the title here, AITA for being mad, my wife rejected me for dance, then dance with someone else. I think, I think these feelings are 100% valid. I think the reason this has become such an issue and it's so emotional is because there's a pattern here and I'd love to see wife acknowledge it. Nonetheless, she did say sorry immediately. I wish there could have been some follow-up, but it seems like he's not communicating mm -hmm. about this and he needs to. And for these reasons, I'm actually at no assholes here. Yeah, I think no assholes here as well. Guys, please rate, review, and see, I don't know if you're being agreeable or what, but who knows? No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. No! <laughs> Guys, please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash A-I-T-A pod. Over 200 bonus episodes. Follow us on YouTube, Reels, Instagram, all the hits. Um, Ad-free episodes on the Patreon Discord. You get it. Shano, bring us in. 
And listen to us on Spotify. The best. AITA for boarding the plane and leaving without my wife. Now, this was actually from the Two Hot Takes subreddit. I found it through a TikTok, but we're, we might be a little late, but it's a juicy one. My wife, Meg, 43F, and I, 47M, have a daughter, Jess, 21F, who goes to college on the East Coast. Jess is in her junior year of college. Meg and I live in the Pacific Northwest. We usually visit Jess a few times during the semester, typically parents weekend and move out day. Traveling with my wife is not a great experience. I am very type A. My wife is very go with the flow and we'll get there when we get there. I do my best to meet in the middle, but not when traveling by plane. Last year, during Parents Weekend, Meg and I were going to fly out to see Jess. Our flight was at 10 a.m. I told my wife that we needed to be at the airport 90 minutes early, and we live about 30 minutes from the airport, so I wanted to leave by 8 a.m. I got up at 6 to make sure everything was ready. It took me attempting to wake her up five times before she eventually got up at 740, then wanted to make coffee and shower and, oh, eat a bowl of cereal. We didn't leave the house until 9. It took so long to get through the security that we missed our flight. The airline refused to refund our ticket and we were able to get new tickets, but not until the next day. And we missed Friday and Saturday morning with our daughter. Jess was disappointed to say the least. Fast forward to now, we were flying down for a long weekend to help her move. Again, it was a long morning of moving my wife along. I told her we needed to leave extra early so as not to miss the flight again. We got there on time with a little bit of time to spare and my wife was annoyed, kept going on and on about how we just have to sit and wait for 45 minutes for them to start boarding. We took our first flight and landed in the connecting city. We only had an hour layover. We got off the plane at 9.15 and our next flight started boarding at 9.40. We had to take multiple rails to get from where we landed to our terminal. We got to our terminal and had 50 minutes until we had to board. My wife tells me that she wants coffee. There was a little market next to our terminal that sold hot food and coffee. I asked if she wanted me to grab it for her. She said, no, I want Starbucks. Well, Starbucks was a rail ride away and a little bit of a walk. No, (laughs) stop. I told her we couldn't do that. We didn't have enough time. She walked away at a brisk pace for her and said she would be back in time. Well, 15 minutes went by and she was nowhere to be seen. They started calling boarding groups. I called my wife hoping she was nearby. She didn't answer. They called a few more groups. They called ours. In a panic, I called my wife again three times. Finally, on the last call, she answered and said she was on her way. It was a long line and she had to wait a bit. I told her they were almost done with boarding and she needed to hurry up. I waited by the gate, but the flight attendant said they would need to shut the gate in two minutes. I waited and waited, but she didn't show up. The flight attendant asked if I wanted to board. Otherwise, she was closing the gate. I tried to plead with her to wait a couple of minutes, but she insisted that she couldn't. So I boarded the plane. A few minutes later, my wife calls me saying that the flight attendant won't let her on. They had already removed the boarding ramp at that point. She told me I needed to tell them to let me off the plane to be with her. And I said, no, it is not fair to do this to Jess again. I said, I told you we didn't have time, but you decided to go anyway. I told her to go get a new ticket and for the next for the next flight and I would see her when she arrives. She got to Jess's school and seemed unbothered by the whole situation. Didn't even really talk about it. I thought maybe she realized it was her fault and she just wanted to drop it. Boy, was I wrong. We w- we are now home and she hasn't talked to me since the trip over a week ago and is insisting that I'm the asshole. AITA? Divorce her. Oh my God. Infuriating. I can't. I would just lose. I don't. I have only missed one flight ever 
a connecting flight because I was watching Kick Ass, and it is a mark of great shame for me. <laughs> um, to be fair, they did that bullshit of like your flight's delayed two hours. Just kidding, ten minutes. Just oh. kidding, new gate. Yes, that happened to me um, a few years ago, and I literally was sitting on the curb outside, bawling my eyes out because they had texted me in the morning, like your flight's delayed two hours. And I get there, and it was like they pushed it up without telling me. And I was like, "What are you like? Why did you even tell me that it got delayed then? Because I wouldn't have. I would have just come to the airport. I would have been fine waiting for however long. I was so upset." That should be illegal. Once you delay it, that's it. Don't delay it then. No, you can't bring it back. I would rather be stuck at the airport than be delayed and undelayed. That's crazy. No, and just sitting at home not knowing that your flight's taking off. They didn't even tell me it got undelayed. Crooked. Undelay, undelay. (laughs) Undelay, undelay. Um, Wow, that works perfectly. I love that. Um, But (laughs) yeah, this is utterly... I have been in this situation before. Uh, basically it was my friend's wedding in Palm Springs. And what happened is I was with these two other guys and one of them just like, I was like hard out. We're leaving at whatever, you know, four 30, four 30 rolls wrong. He's like, Oh, I just finished my shower. And I was like, okay, but for real, like I built a cushion. I was like hard out. 445, you know what I mean? And then literally it's like 447. He's like, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. And I'm not exaggerating. The wedding started at five and he's like, I want to smoke a cigarette. And it's like 458. And I was like, you know what, man? I'm going in there. So bye. Because I was just like, what are you doing, dude? I'm not being late to this wedding that we're here. We've traveled to be here. I'm not going to be late for this. That's insane. Literally. I mean, look, I'm not the most timely person in the world but when it matters like i really do try and make an effort like max does get frustrated with me about like when we're leaving sometimes like it does kind of take me like i'm kind of scattered a little bit like i'll be like you know oh my purse is down there like where's my keys and whatever like oh no i have to go to the bathroom so you know if he were on this episode he would be like um you're not that timely but when it's stuff that matters and like, you know, we have to be at a performance, a play, a show, a, a, a work thing to right. be on set, a plane, a boat's leaving. Like, yeah, I'm going to fucking get there on time. <laughs> a boat's leaving. <laughs> and, but like, he'll get, he'll get annoyed with me. Cause I, I'm like, just cause you're ready to leave on our walk right now. Like, doesn't mean that I need to be ready all of a sudden. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. That's Does fair. That yeah. Sense? I understand that. Yeah. Um, but with this, like, that is so infuriating that she is just like on her own goddamn time. Doesn't give a fuck about how she's affecting anyone. It's rude. It's rude. I mean, it's, it's wasting somebody else's time can be very frustrating, but this is just like, I mean, it's a flight. I I need to be there early for the flight. I feel like this is pretty standard. It's expensive. They don't spare you. Exactly. It's fair. It's fair. thing I was going to say like money too. Like you don't care. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the guy is footing the bill because, um, well, well, actually we, we have an update that shares a little bit well, more. Well, let's not go to the update I was just, just going to say, okay. Okay, we'll get there in a second. But Let's get um, to the Starbucks crime. Oh, God. Uh, what? We don't need to be giving them any more of our money, folks. Oh, just going to Starbucks is your problem? Yeah. <laughs> I meant that she was going to a different terminal. You don't leave the terminal, babe. No, I don't think it was a different terminal. It was just like a rail away. It sounds like it's one of those bigger airports that's like, you know how, um, you know how they have those like walking uh, escalator things. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, whatever. Wait, oh, he meant I gate. think. He, well, because he said there was a little market next to our terminal, but you're right. He meant next to our gate. And, and then, then she the wanted rail... to go. Yeah, whatever. Wait, Still, that's actually, crazy. Wait, actually, no. Is the rail, does that mean she was actually, you know how like there's a rail that's actually getting on a train? It depends, no, yeah. She wasn't doing that, was she? She got on the rail, but sometimes. Or is that the walkway? No, no. He meant a rail ride. 
Oh, like a train? Well, yeah, but you're not necessarily wrong. Because sometimes, for instance, I believe it's the Minneapolis airport has a monorail because the terminal is just that long. But it's not to different terminals. But oh, the okay. Dallas-Fort Worth airport has a rail that goes okay, to all the different that's terminals. that's ridiculous. I thought he meant it was just a walkway away. No, that's not a rail ride. There's no rails. That's not oh, a rail. Oh, this is even more criminal Crooked, than I thought. Crooked, criminal. It's just brazen disrespect. And sure enough, let's get to the update now because honestly, we could scream at this woman for so long. But once once you guys hear this, it's all going to click in on what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Here's the update. Shano, hit us. Wanted to answer some questions. As far as how she acts in other situations, she generally doesn't have any issues. She is never one to be late to work or anything like that. It just seems to be like seems like travel is her poor area. I never noticed things like this until we started traveling often to see our daughter. This is why I never considered ADD or ADHD. She really shows no other signs of this. I didn't think the following information was important, but my daughter made a comment, so I thought maybe I would mention it here. Jess is not Meg's daughter. I was married once before and my wife unfortunately passed away due to complications during Jess's birth. I remarried Meg when my daughter was six. My daughter made a comment that Meg doesn't want to come see or help her. This is why she is always running late. But I have offered to go alone and Meg was always very against that idea. So I wouldn't think that is the case. I think the fact that this seems to be exceptional, um, it seems like OP is kind of walking around it. He's like travel is her poor area, but it seems like he says, I never noticed things like this until we started traveling often to see our daughter. I'm like, yeah, you did. Mm. And it seems like she may not understand how she feels either. Maybe it's kind of a little bit of people pleasing. She doesn't actually have maternal feelings toward the daughter, which is a little strange because God, since she was six, you'd think you would pick six. some of that up. Yeah. But whatever. It seems like husband gave her the out and was like, well, you don't need to come. And I think that's why ownership is so big to me because I'm like, you know what? Sometimes people just don't care about the same things and things like this happen, but ugh, refusing to own it and, and the way this played out is so much more infuriating and torturous what this woman did to him. That Starbucks thing is cruel. It would give me anxiety the whole time she'd be gone. Oh my God. I would be so mad. I would be and then so mad. He has to feel guilty about leaving her. Like she just introduced all these complicated she put emotions. Him in such an uncomfortable position because, like, he doesn't want to do again what he did to Jess because he literally was even like that whole morning being like, please, can we not miss our flights? Like, I do not <sighs> want to do this to my daughter again. <sighs> Make her feel like she's not important to me. And, and then the fact that she's like mad that he would leave without her, like you're acting like this is like a bus or something. It's a fucking plane. It's hundreds of dollars. You're going from the Pacific Northwest to the East Coast. Like that is not fucking cheap at all. And it's also not even like you're just going from like LA to like Phoenix or something where it's like, you know, an hour and a half flight. Like if you miss this flight, you're not getting there for like hours or if not the next day for a weekend you're this gonna play around like that it's absolutely sick and then the way that she didn't even acknowledge it upon arrival no apology just yeah it just is what it is and i i think that she's projecting her own confusion and lack of attachment or something is going on she has mixed emotions about the jess relationship mm -hmm. uh but she's not owning them and that's my that's my issue because she is just sowing discontent and and, and, and and fuck her. Honestly, I think this might be one of the first OPs where I'm like nuclear YTA because I I just can't believe you did this to him and her. Oh, to miss those two days. And like, she's young. She's 21. Like your parents are coming and then your parents miss their flight. Like what? Who does that? I know. It really does feel like she has some sort of Ugh, feelings towards her stepdaughter because it seems like she is able to do things on time when it behooves her. So she's not prioritizing 
her relationship with this stepdaughter or even her husband's relationship with his own daughter because she's fucking that up too. Yeah, I think we we actually had a conversation one time and I think because people will say like lazy, people are lazy. Um, you could maybe read this as laziness, right? Her initial thing, right? She's being kind of five times to wake up and she wants to shower. She doesn't want to do the work of getting ready. And I kind of don't believe in laziness. Um, not, not saying you can't have a lazy Sunday, obviously. Who doesn't like an old lazy son? But the totally. point being that laziness is a very shallow concept that's like, I just want to chill. But I actually think this has nothing to do with that, right? Because usually when people are acting that way, it's because there's some kind of lack of alignment. Something isn't right emotionally with her. She hasn't figured out maybe how she feels about Jess. And mm -hmm. that's, it, I mean, it does strike me as kind of fucked up, but I'm not here to judge that. I'm here to judge that just own it then and don't go rather than making it so confusing and nightmarish for everybody else. Mm hmm. Totally. And I mean, it's just so selfish too. like so selfish. Oh, God, I just can't even imagine like I. Oh, God, like I can't even imagine being like, now hold the plane, hold the plane, <laughs> like hold the fucking plane. Are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? Taylor Swift? Yeah, seriously. Like, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's and then oh, and then just imagine being him sitting in that seat next to the empty seat she's supposed to be in. It's just like, oh, I'm so angry at her. I would be so angry, but then I, I would also have that mixed emotion of like, oh shit, was that the wrong move? Like I really did just straight up leave her, but I like, I, th I think it is the right move, but I can see how he was probably feeling like really conflicted about like, God, I just know I'm going to hear it from her. Crazy making behavior. AITA for boarding the plane and leaving without my wife. I'm saying NTA and nuclear she is. Yeah, but hold on. There's another update. I forgot that he he wrote another update in the comments. So I haven't even I haven't even read this yet. So let's let's oh go for it. Oh my god. Okay. So my wife finally started talking to me again. When she did, I told her that I wanted to have a conversation about the situation, but I wanted to give it a couple of days for emotions to settle down. Some of the comments here gave me a great idea and I wanted to see what she thought about it. For all future trips, I will have my tickets. She will have hers. I typically drive to the airport and leave my car in one of the pay lots. So I would drive myself and she could Uber. She will have all the freedom she wants to do what she wants, but it is up to her to arrive on time and board the plane. I let her know that it was starting to feel like that, feel like I needed to keep track of both of us. I phrased it in a way to make it sound like I didn't want to be controlling over her let her manage her own time. She wasn't happy with this, but she reluctantly agreed. Now I go to the bigger issue that I didn't realize we had until reading the comments. Call me oblivious, but I really never thought there was any issue between Meg and Jess. After talking to my wife, she wanted... She, oh, she wouldn't admit to any issues and started that she would never intentionally delay a flight so that we couldn't see our daughter in quotes and acted offended that I would ask such a thing. If that was her actual purpose, I don't think I would be able to prove it, but it will be at the forefront of my mind in the future. After talking to Meg and Jess, we decided on the following. Meg and I will be visiting Jess on parents weekend, but I will be attending father's weekends from now on. And I will be attending by myself to get some alone time with Jess. Jess seemed very excited and surprisingly Meg didn't seem to have an issue with that. Thanks again to everyone giving me advice, et cetera. Yeah, I think... Um... I guess that sounds like a good solution. It doesn't sound like this wife is terrible in any other way. Um, but I guess I just want to say, like, look, I think um, reflection is important. Thinking about what the world is giving you and also just having some humility because the reality is, like, yes, I try to live with intention, but that doesn't mean that everyone – it doesn't mean that I – let me just frame it in my terms, which is – I am capable of doing things that I do not fully understand, right? We all are, right? Mm. We see this in phrases like, I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, really? You don't know what you were thinking. And, right? It's like incoherent in a way. It's like, yes, you do. I guarantee you were there the whole time you were doing that, you motherfucker. 
But the point is, yeah, our minds are so big and we're made of all these different things and patterns and behaviors we've picked up. And so if someone comes to you and says, hey, like you're conveying, your behavior is telling a very specific thing, which is that you don't give a fuck about Jess. Instead of, no, <laughs> instead of having that reaction thinking, huh, why am I conveying that? Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and so just being like, I'm so offended that you would even think such a thing. Well, maybe have a little bit of self-reflection then of why you're doing this and Get why you seem to be able to show up to work on time. Like, hello. Hello. I like how you've, you've done this random Australian thing. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm here for it. <laughs> I always do it. ATA for boarding the plane and leaving without my wife. I think that nothing changed. I mean, it seems it, it it still doesn't seem to me like she's quite owning it. And so I, I'm still at nuclear uh, MTA and nuclear. No, she is for sure. She's fucking annoying me. And just the fact that like, it's like, oh, okay, here's the solution. Instead of you getting your act together and fucking figuring it out. The solution is that now that now you have, I have to get you a fucking Uber. You can't get in the car with me. Like, Honestly, it's just catering to her bullshit. Mm, it is a little bit enabling. I would have just been like, you can get, you can pay for your own Uber. You're welcome to get the yeah. bus, but I'm no longer traveling with you to see my daughter. Yeah. You can buy your own flights. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. If I, if I'm walking out the door, like I do get, I do get his send him his, his mentality there though. Like if I'm walking out the door and you're not in there, then you're getting your own goddamn Uber. Like, that would straighten me up right away. I'd be like, hell no, I'm not waiting to get an Uber. Like, that would suck. Yeah, that's crazy. No, it's ridiculous. But I, yeah, he should not enable that at all. All right, yeah. guys. Uh, thanks so much for listening. We're going to wrap up here on a fun little listener submesh. AITA for listening to AITA pod out loud in a shared space. <laughs> Already. We love it. No assholes here. And yeah. <laughs> no assholes here. So we're going to pretend it's a different podcast. I rented art studio in a shared building. The ceilings are high, so our walls don't go all the way up, which means the individual studios have no soundproofing. There's a lot of artists in the space, and people work at all different times. Some people play music out loud through speakers. Some watch TV. Some talk on the phone. One guy even took his Spanish lessons from his studio. Now, sure, I've been annoyed with other people making loud sounds. But it's their space. They got a right to use it. The loudest thing is one person's band practice. And while definitely too loud for my liking while I'm working on my art, it's infrequent. So I just let other people do their thing. While I work, I like to listen to AITA pod out loud on my phone speaker, usually at 80% Love it. volume. Today Should I was be at doing- 100% volume, okay? <laughs> Today I was doing just that when a fellow artist with a studio diagonal from mine told me she doesn't like hearing my podcast. Rude. Uh, what? And asked if I could wear headphones. I said I can try to wear headphones, but I really prefer not to, as sometimes headphones just bother me. It's sensory. She responded saying, while well, hearing your podcast is sensory for me, so I have to wear headphones to not be distracted. I again said that I would start wearing headphones sometimes. She pushed hard on me, telling me to wear them as often as I can. Yeah. I just said I'd try and got back to my work. The more I think about it, the more I think I'm justified to listen to my pods out loud how I like. If the problem is solved by one of the two of us wearing headphones and she's the one that's bothered by the noise, but not by wearing headphones, then why should it be on me to wear headphones? I feel like I was being generous and trying to compromise, but she kept pushing on it to wear my headphones as much as possible. I could understand if I was using a speaker, but it's just my phone. A-I-T-A. You know, I really can't blame the woman that was like wanting her to wear headphones because that Shannon girl has the most annoying vocal fry and some kind of like half Jersey, half Valley girl bullshit. Like, what is that voice? I know it drives me insane. And insane. she's always like, yes, 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 yes. It's like, <laughs> do you know what N-O spells, honey? <laughs> Do you have any of your own opinions? <laughs> <laughs> Silence of like, wow, anyway. that is actually pretty true. But anyway, um, yeah, so we did cover this on Keith and the Girl. So OP, if you want to hear um, a bunch oh, of people's did. takes. Yeah, we did. We did. I thought this was a fun one. Um, I did change out AITA pod for Keith and the Girl just for them. Oh, fun. Um, yeah, I mean, God, we've dealt with so many situations like this where 
you know, noise complaints. It's hard. It's hard living in a shared space. A lot of times it's more apartment buildings. This one is more in, uh, a little bit more unique because it's a art studio. So it does seem like these people are renting out these spaces for like workspaces. And it seems like it's probably more so during the day where they were working. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like that. It sounds like there's a pretty established precedent where people do make some kinds of noises. Okay, so I brought this up on Keith and the Girl, and my thought was this. I thought of the ski resort, but here's another one, the train, right? Like, here's what happens in the train. Playing music on the train, no one approves of. Mm. But honestly, if you're in, like, a group of friends and you're having fun on the train talking, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, it's the train. Like, you're... I don't really, I really can't ding for it. Like if you're like yelling or something, but like if you're just like chatting. Mm, yeah. And I kind of mm. feel like this is chatting. It's like 80% phone speaker. That's not super loud. I mean, it does sound like it'd be really reverby, but I'm like, if people are allowed to talk, then using a phone speaker is kind of okay. Yeah. Phone speaker seems like completely normal to me. Like it really can't go that high at all. I usually listen to my own phone phone speaker out loud in my house, like throughout the day with random podcasts and stuff. Um, occasionally I'll put it on the speaker if I'm like, I don't know, doing my makeup or like being kind of noisy where I need it to be a little louder or I'll wear my headphones, like, you know, variations. But I do feel like, I don't, I don't know why you guys needed a breakdown of what I do when I'm at home, but I do think <laughs> that the, <laughs> I like added nothing for this, but I don't think that 80% of your phone volume is very loud. Now, her art studio could be echoey, as you were yeah. just sort of saying. Like, you know, a lot of times those have high ceilings. Yes, she said the high, the ceilings are high. So I do see how that can be kind of loud. But I do like OP's point where she says that, okay, well, if if she's the one with the issue and she can solve the issue by wearing her headphones, like then why do I have to be the one to wear the headphones when the headphones annoy me? Like I'm wearing headphones right now and honestly they're hurting. Yeah. You don't like wearing headphones. Not big um, ones. Yeah. I, I think, I think that ultimately this is just like, look, if this person wanted to hit you back with playing their phone at 80%, I would be like, honestly, that's they're in the clear for that. Like that's obviously what goes in this space it seems within reason here. So I'm kind of like, OP did nothing wrong. The only thing I could say, and this got called out in Keith and the girl, is that OP, I do not feel like you were trying to compromise. I think your answer was no. And I don't like how you're trying to make us think you were trying. You didn't try anything. Mm. You just said no, which is okay. I think you had a right to say no, but don't think you're going to sneak that past us. You weren't saying well. She was trying to compromise in the way where she said, yes, I'll wear them sometimes. I mean, she did keep pushing that back. That was like, no. Okay, yes, yeah, she said. She said, no, I'm not doing it right now. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Oh, she did? She didn't actually put on headphones. Oh, wait. She was, she was bullshitting. She was saying like, oh, yeah, sometimes I will, but not right now. That's what mm -hmm. she was asking for is right now. Yeah. She's kind of trying to spin a little bit, but whatever. I think if that's what goes, and this is within the bounds of reasonable, I, I think it's reasonable. You don't like wearing headphones. Other people play their shit. You're playing your shit. So that's it. Yeah. I mean, there is a part of me too that that is sort of like, yeah, like maybe you should just wear your headphones because like, you know, this is a shared space, so you should kind of um, be respectful of that. But there also is that other aspect of like people talk on the phone and they watch TV, they take Spanish lessons, they're playing, they're practicing their band. Like it does seem like this is an artistic space where there clearly is noise going on. And maybe she does feel like she's being a little bit like um, called out called out or singled out? I think so. I mean, I, I, the only other example I can think of is like Echo Park. You know, I like to run around the park. I wear my headphones, so sound doesn't really bother me. But if sometimes some, for some reason I'm, you know, I want to go, uh, you know, mess with the geese or whatever. I got no music. 
sometimes people are talking loudly. Sometimes people are running, playing phone music. You know, sometimes guys are biking with a loud speaker. And honestly, in all those cases, it's either too quiet or too brief for me to say anything. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of feel this scenario, though, it's like a constant. Ooh, that's a good point. I guess I, I mean, just our feel episodes like episodes are like an hour, you know, if it's like you have to hear it where it's like she can probably hear, but she's not like fully hearing the <laughs> intelligent things we're saying. So she's like not fully like. She's not loud enough it. where she's like invested in hearing what we're talking about. That's a solution. Make it louder, OP, Make so that she louder. can hear how good AITA pod and is. And then we can get another listener. Listener. <laughs> I, I guess for me, it's just hard to ding. I think there's acceptable volume levels. It's been, it, it is a shared space. And yeah, it would be more courteous and it would be a better shared space if everyone played by that rule. But guess what? No one does. So you don't have to be the bigger person. Those are the rules that are going. And that's what it is. Like, I just kind of feel like it's kind of like <laughs> there's respected quiet hours in an apartment building. Would I prefer to live in an apartment building that's always quiet? Well, of course, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. But I understand. Just you can be bumping your dash exactly right. base. Honey. I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think if I was OP, though, I think I would get a little self-conscious of like, oh, God, I don't want her to hear what I'm listening to. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I do a lot of listening back to myself, like talking. So I would definitely not want to play that out loud for fear of looking <laughs> the most insane. Literally. That's why Dora stopped talking to you. Yeah, She's I like, think he's she just died. mumble into himself. <laughs> Wait, what? No, do you? Uh, you haven't seen her in that long? I, Shannon, nothing. I haven't heard her. I haven't seen her. Maybe I Googled her did. name. Maybe she moved out. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Like, that did <laughs> not even not... occur to me. I guess I just kind of felt like she was so steadfast about not leaving. Maybe they finally took her out. Well, yeah. Like, remember her roommate? So this yeah. is his neighbor who has, like, a younger roommate. He probably was like, get the hell out of here. Well, he wanted her out for forever, but everybody told her not to leave because it's Well, wait. Like... Remember you had that whole, like, report with, like, whoever? Like, maybe they stepped oh. in. Oh, girl. The amount of reports I filed with the government. Um, for her, for other people. For her. Okay. Yeah. For her. I mean, you well, know. I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Like maybe. Yeah. She might have finally just happened. reached a point of, uh, yeah. But anyway, I wish her the best. I mean, I am curious about what happened to her. I genuinely hope that uh, she's she's more taken care of. I know. I recently Googled uh, someone I went to college with name because I was like, I haven't heard from him in forever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I mean, I didn't find anything, but he has fallen off the planet. It's funny, I was doing this about someone I went to high school with who had a memorable name, and she was just very interesting looking. She was a sweet girl. And uh, I was like, yeah, I can't find her anywhere. My friend was like, I think she's fine. She works in, like, HVAC. Oh, yeah. She's, she's she fine. Nothing's happening. social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, nah, she died. I yes. was like, no, that's... I know. Well, this kid also had, like, a drug problem, not to get morbid, but I, I, I was, like, worried. I'm, like, trying to track him down. If you're out there. Let me know yeah. you're alive. Let us know what's going on, Mike. OP, thanks for the submission. I think, look, would it be a better world if people treated shared spaces with the maximum possible respect? It would be, but you want to do what you want to do. You don't like headphones. I don't, I don't think you're being an asshole. I think the precedent with the shared space is to do whatever the fuck you want. Within reason. Yeah, and just the fact that you're playing us and spreading the good gospel. Thank you. We yes, I am Jesus you. Christ, and you are Mary Magdalene. I didn't know who to put there because if you were the Virgin mm -hmm. Mary, you'd be my mom, so that would be weird. I didn't know what to do. You're I God. Fuck mother. it. You're God. I am mother. Your mother. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not in the Bible. I what am mother. Mother? Okay. I am mother. Okay. I don't know what's happening. Any Danny, I am your mother. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're the goddess. You're a goddess. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah, guys, we finally did it. We've claimed to be Christ. AITA for listening to AITA pod out loud in a shared space. I think also she was within her rights to tell you to turn it off. I, I think she didn't do anything wrong. I met no assholes here. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. 
All right, guys, we're the assholes for our messianic complex. Um, but thank you so much for listening. Messianic Messiah. Shanna. Uh, uh, uh. Scanning. I am mother. I am mother. Now, what if the Virgin Mary was like, oh my God, Jesus. Like, Wait, don't do the vocal fry. Oh, I'm sorry. I tr- we got a trigger warning and I'm so sorry. I guess I was just doing it too. Oh yeah, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. I'm so happy you're here, Jesus. You're my you're a virgin birth, so thank you. You are my baby. <laughs> I don't know any quotes that Mary actually said. <laughs> Me neither. Um, All right, guys, that's it. Yeah, thanks so much for listening. Rate, resubscribe. Much love. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Peace be with you.